No, it's working. Okay. It's working. It's working. We're just okay. not going to be able to see their comments. Maybe oh, I can get my phone. You go ahead. Okay, so you get your phone. We love to see your comments as we talk, so that's why we wanted to, to uh, start again. But anyway, we're at our house here in Queen, in Queen Creek, Arizona, <clears throat> and uh, we're just we we uh, couldn't be with you yesterday. Tell them what we were doing yesterday. Oh, well, um, we some of you know my father. Uh, was a real estate broker and so he's always loved real estate so uh so we'd love to have our licenses and so we um we we actually just love real estate and so we we're doing a seminar and uh, we we just uh love doing that together and i and we're checking now to see if we're, oh yeah it is live oh we're Thank seeing you. it she's checking your thumbs up and i can i can read your messages on her phone oh. so that's good so this this is a whole new system for us <laughs> <laughs> We love to try different things, as you know, and uh, we, uh, we, we want to keep improving on how it comes across technically to you. So, uh, but we have something fun planned today, and uh, I want to show you something that I found. Uh, okay, some of you have seen this. Who has this album? You remember this? Okay. <laughs> this was our first Christmas album. It was uh, back in 19, I think 63, yeah, 63, where we had just, that was the, uh, that was the same picture on our first album. We used the same picture, only we, the second, and it was songs we sang on the Andy Williams show. Then we did another one, so, more songs we sang on the Andy Williams show. And, and you then, used the same picture. And the same picture. And then. We and, sing you a Merry Christmas. Yep. Look how cute that is. Look at that. Look at that adorable little boy there at the bottom. Isn't he so cute? Oh, fun. And I want to talk a little bit about some of these, my favorite eight favorite albums and how they came about. And um, anyway, this, this is, I was looking through this and the memories were flashing, of course, in my mind and how this is, we, we actually recorded the song Little Drummer Boy and uh, but my favorite one on here was jingle bells and I'll, I'll never forget that we walked into the studio this is our first big recording studio and everything was done live back then mm -hmm. where where you do one take you don't do the they didn't do the orchestra first and then the vocals like, oh, really? like no so we, you like, were there with all the musicians at the same, same time, time wow. in our booth oh, and wow. so <laughs> it, <laughs> crowded booth they, <laughs> they did things differently mm -hmm. uh, we went later on a bit a couple overdubs we call it later on put on a couple of things but we normally laid the bass track all together hmm. and so but this was our very first Christmas album uh, and and it brought up the, and it, what happy memories brought up this uh, music arranged and conducted by George Weil okay oh. George Weil was uh, our first well Val Hicks was our very first uh, conductor or uh, arranger father uh, uh, he and father said, that, what can you do for my boys to make them really good? And so he was a barbershop. So he, he did the barbershop. George Weil took us to the next step. He brought us, not only are we singing kind of, of the harmony, but it's no longer barbershop. It, was, it became with the band. So mm. that's when we started expanding our, our vocal and singing ability. And so um, this... <laughs> uh, and George Weil, by the way, I don't know, is, have, you, have you remember the show called Gilligan's Island? Oh, yeah, I've seen every episode like Come five listen times. Come listen to the, yeah. da, 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 yeah, da, yeah. Da, da, He wrote that. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was really proud of that yeah. song. And, and I says, uh, yeah, but, you know, I love the show. He says, but it's always the same. You always know that Gilligan's going <laughs> to mess up. And he laughed. He says, I know, I know, I know, I know. Anyway. So, so when you worked with him, was it at the studio? Okay, it was at the, it, we worked at it at a studio, and then after we worked, went, you know, did all day long at the studio, we'd go have a little dinner there at Burbank, and then drive to his house in Tarzana. You're kidding. After work. After work. So the long work days, which were how long? Well, this like evening, we would start at, we would start at at least 8, and I know that, it's 7.30, 8. Go all the way through to about 5, and then we'd go take a dinner, and we'd go about 6, 7, 8 at night. Oh my gosh. And then, not only did we go there, then we'd, we'd go uh, an hour and a half there, and then we'd drive over back to Northridge to Jack Regas's house, where he would... Uh, You're kidding me. Every day? Every day. Oh my gosh. That's like 12, 14 hour work days. Uh, let me tell you. How many days a week? 
it, it was six days a week, six oh, days a week. Oh, bless your heart. And, and... Well, and you wonder why people ask you how you're so successful as children? Well, I'm saying, you know, yeah. we, we believed in ESP. Oh. Uh, <laughs> eat, yeah, eat, sleep, and practice. Oh, bless you. That's what it was. And so, now this play <clears throat> that I'm going to, that I just, I just, uh, tomorrow... I'm doing a um, interview with on BBC Breakfast. Is it called mm -hmm. Breakfast? BBC Breakfast. They're at. They're going to ask me about how hard it was, and and so this this story of uh, about what I just said about George Weil and all that is in the in the musical, and it's uh, it's really going to be uh, people aren't aren't uh, aware of how hard it really was. Well, and you look at these faces, you look at these happy faces. And you just kind of go, you have no idea, you know, the, the hard work and the sacrifices. Oh. And they looked happy, but I bet there were a lot of times that weren't as happy. Yeah, there were some very, very, you know, I mean, I'm six years old, right? And so mm -hmm. how would you, 14-hour days, 12, hour, 12 to 14-hour days for a six-year-old, mm -hmm. that's very difficult. How many of you have grandkids that are six that you could imagine work, them working that many hours? You know what? It was really interesting. And you're uh, not a complainer, but it's just reality. We learned to not complain. Yeah. And, and, and let me tell you something. Um, yesterday, no, no, it was Friday. Friday, I went in to, to check on this uh, little musical that we're doing over at the American Leadership Academy, oh. where, I, where I'm the assistant director of fine arts. And I was talking to our wonderful uh, 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 new vocal, uh, well, our choir and orchestra uh, teacher. And I said, and I started talking about how we need to make sure that the kids are are doing this and doing that and and liven up and having fun. And she said, "But they're just kids." <laughs> she doesn't know. And I go, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! That did not compute. That did not compute." Jay's they're had the funnest time this year. He's well, they call it assistant director of fine arts because you're the assistant to the principal. So he's an assistant principal, but he's also the director of fine arts for this school and. I feel, and this is me, I know you can't brag on yourself because you're not that way, <laughs> they, they are just getting a, a really cool experience this year because to have someone that has performed on Jay's level and accomplished and, and just his expertise, who, who does this, I mean, I think probably, mm -hmm. you know, Meryl was eight, you were six. I look at you being a six-year-old and I look at how really, is there anyone else in the history of time that has been going because you even had a two two year jump on Merrill, you know, <laughs> been going for as long as you have, you know. I know they brought Donnie in at five, for, five. A, for a guest appearance or for you know. A couple times. When did he start? He started uh, was it like a year after. I think he started in sixty three or four. No, he started in sixty. So he, did he four. start at five? He started. Time? He started at five, and then wow. he was he, so a he guest. got a year jump on you. Yeah, yeah, but he had a but he came as a guest and then oh, a, as a guest. and then a couple. When did he later, start full time? Full time was Probably about when he five, was six. Spot when he was about six or seven. Yeah. So he could really understand you. Don, Donnie gets me. Yeah, you guys do. I, get, I, I get Donnie too. I, you know, we had the greatest talk, a brother's talk, and you know, sometimes it's just really. Usually, a lot of our talks in the last couple of years have been more business, like how you doing, uh, quick, and how you doing, uh, I love you, and all that stuff, but. He just, he just called me, and it was those beautiful chat. He says, how are you doing, really? I mean, really, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And so we, we talked about some of the highlights and frustrations mm -hmm. and things. And, um, you probably get each other more than any of your I, I get Donnie really well, and he gets me. Oh, oh this calling is someone's you. calling me, so I don't know. This. <laughs> oh, Bob okay. hey, Bob Cattell. Uh, I'll gonna, call you later, okay? <laughs> we're going to turn off Jay's phone. Bob's a good friend of mine. Yeah. He's a, remember Bob Cattell? He was with us oh, he, like in our second visit. He was on our second uh, live, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. So I hope this system works because it, it feels feels better than to have that little phone there like, like that. But anyway, we hope it works. But I was, I was telling them about your... So American Leadership Academy. Oh, yeah. Jay, well, Jay... Um, you know that he, Jay and Merrill, last November, so a year ago, they did their last uh, gig together. The That's same right. night, Marie and Donnie did same theirs. Same day. Yeah. And um, at that point, he knew he the musical was coming. He wasn't able to tell you all. So he knew he had this time. 
uh, that he was going to, he could have taken a break for a year and done nothing, and we could have maybe, I don't know what we would have done, because we do everything all the time. Yeah. But um, he wanted to work with kids, and he's always wanted to work with kids and with teenagers, so that's why he took this time this year to go work at uh, the, the school. He, he, you know, really wanted to work at a high school yeah yeah you know so anyway it's been really tough well, about it well this you know i when i retired it was just like okay you know <laughs> you know we we have we always have fun and i thought you know i just felt like i well you're never retired I, my father says don't ever retire so well, i you, never really retired you retired, I, from, I retired from the stage yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i and uh as my book says in the stages, how I, it, this was a new stage now, okay? But a new stage for me with no stage, but a different stage of life, okay? Now, this so you is. Have had a stage. So I says, Your I need show. a stage. That's yeah. kind of like the musical case. That's why the new, the new stage, the musical. And I, and, and, and I just thought, you know, my heavens, um, I, I was, of course, I was working on a musical, and I just couldn't tell anybody about that. Yeah, for four years. For four <laughs> years. But I wanted to do something else. And I said, I want to, I want to really help kids, because I really struggled as a kid with, with adjusting, and I wanted friends. And, and, and when father and mother put me back into a public school system, and then we, we had to go back out and then go back in, it made me really, it was a good thing, because it made me really appreciate what kids really have out there, and they're not taking advantage of it. They're not enjoying it. They're not taking up op the uh, opportunities in, and they're not, they're not, at, you know, like, like, so this academy, American Leadership Academy, I'm saying, you have a chance now. This is a very important time in your life where, where you can, can not only academically develop, but physically and socially, spiritually, you can, and musically, you can, you could, this is a time where you really can find out about who you are and what your direction is, what you like and what you don't like. And this is the time to really learn how to get along with kids, other kids. And so, so I like to stop them when I see misbehavior and I like to stop them and I have them repeat what they just did so that they learn by redoing what they just did. They're lucky to have you this year. Oh, bless you, Angel. Thank, oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I just am enjoying this time of my life. It's the best time of my life right now. And, but what's exciting, and, and as we were singing in Jingle Bells, and I saw, I, you know, that I still, to this day, remember whenever I sing Jingle Bells, remember that record, really? being in that record, oh, Jingle Bells. I see everybody jingled all the way, and also Drummer, drummer Boy, but mm -hmm. um, Joy to the World. I mean, this, some, this is a beautiful Christmas album. Now, a lot of you, oh, go ahead. Didn't you have some of the Wrecking Crew? Oh, that was later on. Oh, okay. Because I knew you were, there was that movie, The Wrecking Crew. Yes. It's so fascinating to me that those were your musicians. Yep. Right? They, they, a, lot a lot of them came from that. There. Wow. Cool. Yeah. A lot of them came from there. There was Jimmy Gordon. There was Hal Blaine. There was, uh, oh, the bass player. Oh, my brain. Anyway. But then what happened is, so a lot of you remember this album, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to this album later. Well, this, the, the, the preface of that was this album, which, which uh, our gospel, oh, there it goes, our gospel album. So we were um, still on the Andy Williams show, and um, we, we, I, this is where we really deepened our, our repertoire. Uh, we were still on this, doing this, uh, we had just, well, uh, pretty much closing up the, the travels of Jamie McFeeters, where we worked with Kurt Russell, and and we we re recorded some of these most beautiful oh, hymns, and uh, uh, this gosh, the memories come back. I even remember being in the in the uh, photo studio for that picture, and then because because of that. We said someday we're going to do a big family Christmas album where, where it brings in Christ and it brings in uh, love and family and, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make this a great uh, album. And so later on in the 70s, and some of you have this, this Christmas album, which was my favorite Christmas album of all time. From, and, and, you know, the, you open it up inside. It was just... The, the memories 
uh, the memories of of, uh, of that album are, are amazing. And so when we were going to do this Christmas setting in the in behind us, I said, let let me show some of these Christmas albums and songs. And and I remember when we were uh, putting this together. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a guy by the name of Don Costa who arranged and produced this, okay, right here. Now, I don't know if I ever said this, I don't know if I said this before, but I, I, some of you don't know, Don Costa was an amazing, amazing person. And he arranged this uh, uh, for us, this album here. And I remember one time, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra was... Uh, recording where we were in a studio where we did a lot of this album it was called Cherokee Studios in in, uh, in uh, do you remember Cherokee Studios it's it's now been flattened it's like condominiums but anyway the LA gang uh, Joni and all of you know the uh, uh, where that is uh, Cherokee Studios where we did a lot of it there anyway um, I went back and so the the, the Ed Green and and the, the, you know, the mixer did this, and, and, and he also was there with uh, uh, Frank Sinatra. And um, so, <laughs> so I went to go see my old buddy, uh, Ed Green, and, uh, and so uh, Ed Green was mixing, and, and I walked into the, the Cherokee Studios where we did a lot of the Christmas album, and I said, Ed, how are you? He says, doing great. And so uh, I said, who's in the, who's in the, uh, um, uh, this booth? Because he was mixing. And he says, that's Frank Sinatra. Oh, whoa, okay. Because we had met Frank Sinatra uh, a year or two before uh, this. And when we were working with Nancy Sinatra, or a couple years ago, a few years ago before that, um, when we were working at the International uh, uh, and so in Vegas and so I said well that's great can I stay and listen for just a few minutes and uh, so he says of course listen to this he's just putting overdubs and <laughs> um, I can't remember who else was there it was Ed Green and there was um, I see Ed Green okay this is where Don Costa was there that's right okay Don Costa walked in and I said Don I haven't seen you in centuries because he is, he is amazing. So Don Costa was Frank Sinatra's uh, arranger as well. And so Don Costa is sitting there and he comes in and uh, we're listening to uh, Frank Sinatra. So I, I think, I don't know if Frank Sinatra was having a bad day or what, but he was just, you know, he wasn't singing great. Uh, I didn't think so. And I was only now about, what, 15? Uh, this is again about the same time we did this uh, Christmas album in the seventies. <laughs> I, I know this is kind of a hard story because, but anyway, I I thought he was just a little bit off in a couple places, just you know, you know, and so. But I'm listening to Frank Sinatra put his voice on, and uh, Don Costa there is right there, and Ed Green, and so he comes in. I we, we give I give Frank Sinatra a big hug, and he says, "How's your father and your mother?" And I said, "They're doing really good." And I'll you know, give them my love. And I says, "Oh, I sure will. I hope you don't mind me listening. I just wanted to stop in and yell at Ed Green, and then I find Don Costa here, and then, and now you." I thought, "Wow, this is great." He says, "Oh, come on in." So I went into the booth to listen back. And and uh, so we're listening and. And uh, I can't remember the song, but we're listening back. And, and when we finish, he says, what do you think, Ed? You know, Frank Sinatra says, he says, well, I think you could do another one. It's, you, know, you think you got a good one, better one in you. And he says, yeah, yeah, darn it. He says, what do you think, uh, Don? He says, well, it, while he's asking Don and Ed, I go, oh, to myself, I said, oh, please don't ask me what I think, Cause, you know. I'm going to be nice, obviously, but I, I and he, he so he asked uh, Don, and he says, "Well, you're off, you're off a little bit here and there, and in the edge, you got to, you got to bring it up." And you know, he's kind of correcting him, and 
And sure enough, Frank Sinatra looks at me and says, Jay, what do you think? <laughs> there was a part of me for that moment, and you know, it was just a quick moment. I thought, should I really be honest? And, or should I just be nice, you know? So I says, you know, I think it's, I think it sounds pretty good. I didn't really want to. How do you correct Frank Sinatra? <laughs> You're a smart guy. I was, but I could. I could have been. I look back now. I go, what if I would have said? Uh, what if I would have said? Uh, you know what? I think you're just a little bit off, and and this part in here. No, no. I don't think that would have fl flown very well. Do you? What do you think, Karina? I, so I I restrained, and he went back and fixed. And and when I said when and this is the lesson I learned though. When I says, no, oh, I think that sounded pretty good. And he looked at me, he says, nah, nah. He says, I'll do it again. So I don't know if I, if I should have been honest. I don't know. You know, you have those moments where you think, what should I have done? But I think I did the right thing, I guess. I was, I was only 16 years old. Oh, look at this. Look who's bringing. Everyone was wondering about traditions. We're talking about oh, traditions today. Whoa. I made us hot chocolate. Look at this. This is so cool. Anyway, we're a little behind today because... And, and toast. Oh, Jay had a, love this one. I think Jay had a, uh, you know, before the BBC breakfast, they always do like the day before or several hours before. You know, they like to look at the shot because you're doing it with Skype, which usually is yes. rather in person. Yes. So Skype is kind of like in Zoom and it, it's been like the way to do things to adapt to COVID and to adapt to, you know, just like you guys with your Thanksgiving, you were yeah. talking about you did a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. and First time ever in the history of Osmond. <laughs> there were all nine of you <laughs> they, on that all Zoom nine call. Of us. Yep. And oh my gosh, I wasn't sitting next to Jay, but when I would come into the room and I could hear them, it was hysterical. What a bunch of goofballs. But they were just having the best time. <sighs> Silly. <laughs> I, I was like really, really silly. I mean, it was so fun, and uh, it, it was it was really uh, therapeutic as well. You're all funny. It's like you're all funny and just having all nine of you playing off each other. Well, in, in fact, we talked about uh, in fact we talked about what we were all going to be doing this Christmas, and then one of them I can't remember who brought it up about this how hard this this Christmas album was to record. Do you know when you listen to this, you know. Our harmonies were so tight and buzzing. I mean, they're like, like buzzing. What does that mean, buzzing? That means like there's when when we there was kind of like let's say let's take six part harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you, you and you, you turn them in, and they not only do you have to be on, but but then there was a couple inter what do they call interludes inter interchanging, and harmonies would go through wow. like this, go like this, and when you have to go. And then a half in here, and then a half in there, and then when you transfer over and you listen to this album, it is, it's like it's beyond. And wow. That you would you would hear buzzing. So people it, are singing in the cracks. In the cracks. Wow. And you buzz, and ah. and, and listen to that album. Those who don't have it, I, or you could oh you could always download uh, download it, but it's like amazing. So when I saw Don Costa, that's why I brought up the Frank Sinatra story because he arranged that. And that guy was he amazing. Taught you to buzz? He taught us how to buzz. And Earl Brown was, was who no longer is with us, unfortunately, either. But he was he organized the, he arranged it. So that was probably our, I think out of all the Christmas projects that our family did, this was the hardest really? one. And, and then, of course, you know, you, you remember Osmond's family shows, but as far as albums, that one was our hardest one because we worked and worked. And so the reason I bring this up because when I'm talking to those kids over there at high school, on this little high school play there, and they're sitting around they're singing, ah, da, 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 and I go, okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Figured out on the chalkboard, geez, like this, stop, <laughs> stop. And I'm trying to be really nice. Jay's having a hard time. I'm having a really hard time. Because he's used to like, when he was a teenager, these kids' ages. <laughs> But you have to realize they didn't work 14 hour days. And that's what this teacher really, <laughs> Serenity, helped me through that. She says, uh, Mr. Osmond, you gotta realize that they're, they're just kids. And I go, I know. But, so, <laughs> and then I go, but they're off key. And I go, okay. But she says, I know. So I go, let's do it again. But I'm really nice about it. I mean, I'm not this 
this yeah. ogre. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, but I'm saying, okay, let's do it one more time, kids. Only this time, really listen. <laughs> really listen. And, well, you're and, helping them. I know, That's but wonderful. I, but, but I said, okay, what? Well, and then I realized that it, they're not going to put the time in. They're not going. Well, to, they can't. So I'm thinking in my mind, okay, you know what? The whole purpose of this is to have fun. Yeah. Now, that's what we did not do when we did the Andy Williams show. It was not fun. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I have got to rethink this whole process. They're not there to do the Andy Williams show. They don't have to gruel every day for 12, 14 hours on these songs. They're there because they want to sing and they want to be and they want to have fun. Now, so make it fun for them. Don't, don't, you know, and, and I, that's why I like our new teacher. She, she has that. Let's make it fun for them. I go, yes, let's make it fun. So my kids, so I'm going to, I'm going to bribe them a little bit. I says, the <laughs> one who has the most fun gets candy or, or ice cream or whatever. Yeah. So I'm going to bribe them on, okay. on uh, say that you can, and I'm going to reward them, you know. You know, if you guys but want. But it's a whole different mindset. If you guys want, I'll go live on Jay's school concert. Well, okay. Now, but realize they're it, high school kids. They have a balanced life. They're doing their studies. They're they're having a social life. They're they're being home with their families. They're they're playing sports. So these kids aren't fourteen hours a day on music. And I've got to remember this. Yeah. And I yeah. and I sort this is where I'm I've really uh, found a, a flaw here. <laughs> a week is that I can't do this. I can't stop. I, they were they are going to be off key. They yeah. are going to be off key, it's okay. and it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So I this <laughs> good therapy. And, and, and I had to get that off my chest. I'm sorry, but I I have to learn that it's okay. Um, and I never it wasn't okay when I was a kid. So that's the big thing I've learned and working on this week. And then I'm going to let it go. I'm just going to make sure they have fun. I was wondering, we had a lot of questions uh, from people about, um, so Christmas time in your family, um, obviously you were always at the studio at Christmas time, because yeah. I've learned that about you. Christmas yeah. time basically means you're super busy as a, as a act, as a performer. Christmas time is super busy as performers. Mm -hmm. So it was probably the same when you were young, right? So you were doing Christmas shows, but that meant even more practicing oh. and more. So were your Christmas traditions kind of wrapped up in those productions, or did you have private ones at home, or private things you guys did? Like when you went home after, what were some of the things that you remember that you guys did as a family? My my parents made it really fun. There was always music playing, mm -hmm. or the, you know Christmas songs. Uh, and uh, when we weren't working, we were just playing. And my uh, my mother made things. She was like really decorative, like you, and she mm -hmm. used to put things up on. She always had sayings on the wall. And it, Christmas was like a great time to 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 celebrate Christ and to celebrate life, to celebrate uh, and, and you know the Santa Claus feeling and the fun mm -hmm. and and to. It was just a wonderful experience for our whole family. The home, our home was always full of <laughs> noise and 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 fun and love and uh, my, my and discipline. Wow! But <laughs> Father always said discipline is a form of love. If you love someone, you need discipline. And 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 uh, and see, the word discipline is kind of kind of distorted. It, it doesn't mean harsh and, and it just means remembering what you want, thinking through it, practicing, doing. So it was, we had chores and we had lots of those kinds of things, but it, but it was a happy time. You know, I've noticed that, if it's okay if I tell them, I've noticed that about you with the kids at school yeah. because you're disciplining them, but. I've seen you do it in a way that's so loving and so kind, but it takes your time. I remember one time we were pulling away in the truck and a couple of boys were outside the window and one said something to another one that was kind of mean. Very mean. And we were pulling away and you said, back back up the truck, back up. And I thought, oh no, you know. 
what 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 are you going to do you know so we backed up the truck and he rolled his window down and he just really carefully took a moment and he taught them and he said what what you just said what did you just say and he repeated it and he said do you know that that made him feel bad do you know that and he just very kindly explained to them and taught them you know so discipline it doesn't mean always that you're mean. Discipline is taking the time to correct something. To correct. And I saw that in you, Thank and I you. know that that's where you got it from your father. Yeah. Well, he always took the time, and he always explained why he was disciplining. Not just, just to be this and be firm and get this done. And something. He was hard sometimes, but he would always explain why. Mm -hmm. Why do you do this? Why did, was I have to doing this? Why did I say what I had to say? so that we understood mm -hmm. discipline. And unfortunately, kids just don't have a lot of that these days. Yeah. They're, they said, oh, well, loving, well, just let them do what they want. Well, they, they need to have so structure. Said, this they, is love, what was that? There's two, my father always said, this is love and this is love. Wow. Wow, powerful. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, but he says, kids are getting a lot of this, but they're not getting a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoo, and he's so right. And I, I, and I, you know, in my when I was raising my kids, I, I, you know, <laughs> probably gave him a little bit too much of this, because it's like Disneyland all the time, you know. I didn't give him enough of this, and uh, they're now getting this, <laughs> but they're learning that on their own. Yeah. And now, or you're helping. Too, I'm, I'm helping, I mean, but uh, like Jason's a great dad. You can't do this as much to adult kids. <laughs> Jason's a great dad, but he's learned to do this on his own mm -hmm. with better. He is a great he's dad. a better dad than I was. Cute kids. It's been so fun mm -hmm. living close to them and uh, seeing them, and yeah. And we purposely we don't include any of our kids in social media. We, Jay, just knows how it feels to grow up behind a camera lens, and yeah. he purposely doesn't want to. Uh, merge those worlds with what we do with you we choose to do this every week we we plan to do this every week but we don't want our kids or grandkids to feel like there's always a selfie or a live with you know or anything with them in, involved we see them we love them these christmas traditions yeah. always include kids and grandkids um you know what I was wondering? We, we have the cutest grandkids. <laughs> know, adorable. Oh, God. Uh, we just went, yes, was it yesterday? Yeah. No, the day before. I don't know. The day, we day before, the day before, yeah. And then we were, uh, a few days before that, we were with cute little Tate. We did a... So good. <laughs> Jay loves his toast with his cocoa. Hot yeah. chocolate and toast. That's it. So That's hot chocolate. It's super easy. I know you all make hot chocolate. I, I, these are giant mugs we got in New Orleans, but um, I don't know if you do the recipe. Like I do three teaspoons of sugar and a teaspoon of cocoa. That's the kind without sugar with a little bit of water. And I put that in the microwave and then I add the milk or we use almond milk. Almond, almond milk is great. And then you warm that up and it's so yummy. We just do it fresh. And then in Arizona, they do this Mexican hot chocolate. So I put a little teaspoon of that in sometimes because it has a little bit of so cinnamon good. and some things in with it. It's kind of spicy. Well, it's like cinnamon, nutmeg, that kind of thing. Anyway, so we, we are just inviting you over for hot chocolate. And I don't know if anyone... Uh, did everyone get their hot chocolate? Are everyone ready to <laughs> hot chocolate? And, hot chocolate. And just so you know, the fireplace isn't real. It's not real. It's just a video. It's fake. It reminds me. Do you remember cool, when we were at it? the tea room in York? There was that cute little old fireplace that was uh, oval like that, and um, it looked just like that one. So and can you hear the cracking? Yeah, isn't that cute? It's like cool. It's like you know. Anyway, it's like it's so really in Arizona, bad. you don't really light up the fireplace. No, it's still not in Arizona. It's warm here. I mean, if we were to go outside right now, Jay would probably take his sweater off because oh, yeah. it's not that cold outside. Well, I wanted to make it, I wanted to wear a sweater because I wanted inside. to feel, feel like it was like a Well, we don't have our heater on. So we don't have, it, we don't have a heater on or anything. And yeah. so inside, it's, a, it's just a little, I don't want to say it's even cold, but just not warm. Yeah. So Jay's... And, and me too. We put a little sweater on. But but you know, and especially this time of year where where it's, it should be happy and fun. 
it's a hard time also for a lot of people because of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. well, but do you know what? Your this space, however small or big or whatever, is it, the whole idea is to what can you do to make it comfortable, nice, and, and enjoyable, mm -hmm. and orderly, and we, most we importantly, you. have the spirit with you. And to, to gosh, that's we can make this little. My father always said, "You can make home heaven on earth." Mm -hmm. But it's up to you. And I know, I know there are some people that even without COVID, Christmas is a time that a lot of times you focus on families and your your family relationships. Yeah. I know there are some of you because you've shared with me that maybe you have some strained family relationships. Maybe Christmas time is yeah. hard because you've lost a loved one that you're used to sharing the, the Christmas season with, and it, it draws attention to those people either that you um, aren't seeing because maybe they don't want to see you or there's some problems there or maybe you're missing someone that and you're alone now mm. and and maybe that Christmas season amplifies that and makes you feel extra lonely and we don't want you to feel that way we want you to you know focus on you know that's what Jay and I always do we focus on what we have we focus on because what you know we have that sign when you focus on the good the good gets better yeah and so Gratitude. what we do there's so much positive there's so much to be thankful for oh, gosh. and Christmas time just to thank our Heavenly Father for the mm -hmm. gift of his son Jesus Christ absolutely and for what the real season is for absolutely. talk about gratitude I mean and and remember Brenda teaching us that when yes. you're having that gratitude in your mind, it your fires brain, it up. Fires up. Your brain's happy, and so so instead of thinking about those things I mentioned quickly, I don't want to dwell on those that maybe some of you are sad about. Mm -hmm. Shift that over, like Brenda taught us to do, and and remember the things that we're grateful for. And even if it is, I mean, the reason for the season is Christ's birth. And if we can even say, you know, thank you so much, Christ was born, we're celebrating his birth, and all of the things that Christmas really is. You oh, know. so much. It's, it was so beautifully said. One of the, and one of the people that, I'm, that we, we're grateful for, uh, and she's having a really hard time, so we, we, need, we need to have you put her in your prayers, is Judy Taylor. And she's now, she's recovering. She's doing a lot better. But she, uh, is, uh, bless her heart, she's been through a lot. She's yeah. had a hard couple of years. Yeah. And, and I know some of the other ones of you that have, you know, there are there are a few other people really struggling with some, oh, some really personal hard issues things. right now that don't wish for us to say their names, so we won't. Yeah. But um, there are a lot of people struggling, and, and we're so thankful that you could pray for each other thankful for the prayers for Judy and she is improving it slowly but she's doing a lot better yesterday she actually picked like some fruit and some things to eat and she yeah. ate and she yeah. she's feeling better we keep in touch with her a couple of times a day and um, today yeah. we haven't haven't reached out to her this morning how are you Judy are you there yeah. we don't know if she's there well I know the Arguellas are, are getting better too yes. and, and and many many other good friends and but, 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 you know, when you pray for each other, it, it just, just connects you not only closer to God, but to them. And so it really, it really helps and it is great how it pushes out the wonderful vibes. And you know what, I got to show it something that Judy did. You know, Judy helped us put a lot of our albums collection together and she, she got this one. Uh, this is, I don't know, uh, this is what they call a bootleg. Judy knew this was a bootleg. It was kind of a funny thing she did because she thought it was funny. Yeah. Now, what do you guys know? <laughs> what do you guys notice about that in the top left where it says, uh, includes crazy horses and puppy love? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Jay um, in fact, it's one of the things that are the contrast in the musical, how they were doing Crazy Horses the same time they did Puppy Love. It, and how can that be? I mean, <laughs> what? talk about contrast, okay? Yeah. It's in the same year that they hit, like, in the top five uh -huh. both together. But that was so obvious. It Puppy was Love and Crazy Horses. Because that was never on the same album. And the bootleg put both of these on the is, same is, album. Isn't that funny? Now, here's another one that she found for us in, in Japan. 
This is like the most amazing. It's like velvet. Look at that they're, velvet. They're etched in velvet. I don't. It, their outline is. You it, probably it took can't Osmond's hear. live album, and and it, or and or I, I think it was anyway. This is this is all. Yeah, the Osmonds live, but they did a whole different version. And of that it. wasn't a bootleg, right? This was Japan did their own thing. Japan did. There's so many different things that come out in Japan. Can you see that? But. I mean, but this was a whole Denon Records, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denon Records. They did their whole. They were a whole separate. Uh, Here, this is falling out. I don't know okay. if you lose your album. Oh yeah, put this in that. There's, isn't that amazing? Uh, so it. And anyway. this is all in Japanese. Maybe some of you, you uh, fun little friends over in Japan, can read that, but we can't. <laughs> well, but anyway, well, I hope what you. You do. You find your little traditions, and you and you think, what are some fun things that you can do this year, to to and and that that would be every year. What, like what be some of the fun things. I remember we used to have pajamas all on the twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. We got new pajamas, or or we all um, we talked about the star. Where is the star, by the way, on the tree? Well, <laughs> we had a problem. Like our stuff is all packed in in Utah. Oh, she and, did something um, so funny. So our tree, we have two trees, and they're really nice. They're in Utah. So I actually went to a charity store because <laughs> I was dropping off some things I'd found here that we didn't really need anymore. And I went and dropped them off to a charity store. Mm -hmm. And I went inside, and this tree was in there. So I bought this tree thinking, I'm going to buy this tree at a charity store, <laughs> and then I'm going to go donate it back after yeah, Christmas. Yeah, so, yeah. But... This is the funny part. Um, I didn't have any of our ornaments or our our uh, star for the top, mm -hmm. and so I want you. We to We couldn't see. find our star. We always put a star on the so top. So I want you to see. So what's... he's the star. He's the star of this <laughs> Christmas. Okay. That's the star. That's the star on the top of the on the top of the tree is right there. Theodore is the star. Theodore is the that, star. That, his name is Theodore. Christmas. And he's a reminder to me, but we couldn't find a star. I mean, we looked everywhere to put the star on the tree because we love that. And I put that up there. And Jay didn't even notice. And last night, Jay Jay was looking up there, and he, he just started laughing. I started laughing. You know, I'm like, what is that doing? That, up she there? always does that when I start squirreling, you know. But yeah, yeah. And so anyway. You know, one thing I wanted to um, remind everybody that you know Jay and Meryl did that last year a year ago. They released their was it two years ago, their Christmas album. I love that Drummer Boy. Jay's heard that version of Drummer Boy in his head. Oh, well, ever since this so album, so ever since this first album, when we did Drummer Boy on the on this one, yeah. that's, I started there. Wow. I started there. Yeah. So, you know, he, Jay is the ultimate Drummer Boy. I was <laughs> asking him if he would, and he didn't really want to, but I was asking him if he could show you guys, so you can, you decide, maybe you guys can encourage him. I wanted him to show you he, his his drums oh. he has. Oh. You know how they look like regular drums? Well, the the skin or the the surface that he hits is actually digital. So he can turn the uh, drum on, uh, the drum set on, and he can actually choose the sounds that the heads are going to make. Oh, it's so fun. And he fun. was over there last night just having the best time. <laughs> and I said, will you please do this tomorrow? And he said, I don't, I don't really want it. I don't well, know. I don't like, know. I just, but, okay, this is like my little Will you person. show them kind of? Some of the sounds? Some of the sounds well, sure. they made? Oh, yeah. Would That'd you guys fun. like to see that? Would you oh, like to see Jay? But, okay, hold on one second. But, I got, I'll go get it ready. Oh, oh, the, it, it, turn but, on the big app? Tell them about your drummer boy. Oh, well. Well, talking about going back to the star, one of my favorite albums on Merrill's in my Christmas album is is Christmas Star, and I love that song about uh, Christmas Star, and that's Karina found it for us, and 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 I did it with uh, Maria Wells, who has got an angel voice. Oh, we love Maria. Wow, and uh, so, but anyway, that was the, but Drummer Boy. I always wanted to do Drummer Boy that way. So. And my yeah, my favorite Christmas song is Christmas Star now. I love your voice in Christmas Star. I, I love did. that song, oh, and you sing it with so much heart. Thank you. Well, I think with combination of Maria, Maria, and myself singing mm -hmm. that, it's just, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Showing this cute little manger. I, she, oh. the, right here, right behind this chair. Look at this cute. Look at this. Isn't that can, fun? Can you see it? Oh. See the little manger? I don't think they can see it. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Who can see our manger right there? So it just, it's the... Yes, so, I was, I, we love collecting... Uh, nativities. Na nativities. From all over the world. We, we collect love collecting nativities. the nativities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you go get behind your oh, drum okay. set. All right. Uh -huh. And I will bring them over okay. so they can see you, your, I, your I, drums. There are so many cool sounds on my wonderful pearl drum set here. Okay. So I want you to... I want you to show them like the sounds, and so the, is the, um, yeah. is that on? Uh, yeah. Okay, now turn that on. Turn this on. And, and uh, Kevin, Kevin Packard, my good buddy at Pearl Drums in Nashville, uh, got me this drum set. I'm going to put this on a basket. Okay, got me this drum set. Now, uh, there are different sounds. There are different sounds that I, I love. And then you can even put, um, you can even put, uh, oh, oh, like the different lute songs. Now, now you can do with the drums. church function, functions uh, and the, to teach these uh, young men uh, in our ward some drums and, and it, when when they saw what you could do with drums and and how it's anybody who has ADHD or if you have kids or grandkids that are like a little nervous or into everything or, or always talking again I was talking about me as a kid like I was this way Get him a drum set because there's nothing better, nothing better that will help you get things out, your emotions. I mean, you can imagine, and I saw these little kids that I was teaching them over there at, at our church. I was saying that how easy it is to just do that. Just practice. And so I was showing them. The, the drum, it's, in, it's on YouTube, it's called Jay Osmond's Favorite Drum Solo. 
And I, when I broke that down to them, and I showed them how easy it was to play it, they couldn't believe it because all, they're, all I'm doing on that drum solo is... in different variations, but it's very basic. I saw their eyes light up. It was so fun. And so they're each getting a drum set. <laughs> but I, I, w I just want you to know how, how much this, these drums or drumming has blessed my life. And, 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 uh, and some of the fun things that I have been ex experienced through drumming has, uh, is absolutely a blessing to me. And it started out with me beating pots and pans at my mother's feet when she was doing the dishes. And she was just saying, oh, Jay, you are such a drummer. You are so good. And, I, and it made me beat those pans harder and harder because she recognized that I had a lot of nervous energy and I needed to get out something. And she just kept encouraging me. I was two, I remember three years old, sitting down by her, the sink at her feet, beating things, beating on, uh, and, and tapping on things, and she give me these pots and pans. She says, this is your drum set now. Bang as hard as you can, Jay, bang it. And while she did the dishes, and she would sing to me in that cute little voice while I beat those things for hours. And it is blessed. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a great Christmas time. And sweetheart, come out. Let's maybe close. I think we're getting a little bit long on this. But okay. anyway. Well. It, I, I hope we, uh, can they see okay there? I think they can see you if you want to close yeah. out. Yeah. So anyway, we hope you have a wonderful uh, Christmas time and, uh, and, uh, and to have, bring some joy into your life. And, and, and to bring joy, to bring joy into your life. The key is to bring joy to others. And once you start realizing that when you make someone else light up or, or say a kind word or lend a helping hand or, or give a smile, it just, it just changes the whole thing Oops, and, and bring, oh, it brings joy to your heart by doing that. So anyway. Well, and, and we love, um, Jay and I sat last night and we were reading all of your traditions. We were reading your traditions and your... Uh, the things you are sharing with each other and we just want you to continue doing that share your traditions share the things in your memories that you have of your families growing up because we read those maybe any memories you have with Jay's family about their music for Christmas or yeah. or their shows or any of that and yeah. um, I think we'll be here next Saturday. So it'll I think, be. I think we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, and and you're gonna. Uh, Yesterday next, we had a real estate seminar. Oh, you said that. We will be here next yeah. Saturday, and then but also that later on that uh, right after there's a little music program that we're gonna be doing. So we'll bring you some oh, live feed from that. Pop in and be live. We'll pop, yeah. And then watch for Jay for his. Um, uh, watch for his uh, BBC Breakfast interview tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Tomorrow. That should be BBC Breakfast. Yeah. Anyway. So, Thank you for joining us. We love you, and we are going to sign out. Okay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.